Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another really fun episode. Today I will show you how I did this photo manipulation and also I will show you what settings do I use on my Wacom tablet in my workflow process. So let's start by talking about the tablets. Wacom is the brand of my choice and I have been using Wacom for more than 11 years now, from the beginning of 2007 and I'm really, really happy with them. So I tried a lot of different uh, Wacom models, but I'm exclusively working with uh, Wacom Intus Pro medium-sized tablets for years now. And uh, I love medium-sized tablets because that's the the, the, the size of my preference because I like to move my hand a little bit more from the elbow, not just from the wrist. There are guys who like smaller tablets to move their hands just from the wrist. And of course, there are some people who like to move a little bit more the, the arm and to draw more artist, artistically like. So you have all the sizes for your needs. Today I'm working with the newest Wacom Intus Pro medium size tablet. And this one is really nice upgrade from a previous version because First of all, it's much smaller overall, but it's same medium size working surface. So if we compare the previous Wacom Intus Pro model with this one, you can see that this one is much bigger and it is much thicker than a new version. So this is really good, especially because now I can carry a smaller backpack with a laptop and that tablet. I don't need to carry a larger backpack because actually my previous Wacom Intus Pro tablet was a little bit larger than my laptop. So that's a great thing. And the Pro Pen 2, this is really nice pen to work with because it has more than 8,000 levels of pressure. So that means that I can really precisely control the brush size or the amount of ink that I'm applying on my image. I will demonstrate that a little bit later. And now let me show you what kind of settings I like to use on my tablet and in Photoshop. So let's do it. On this Wacom Intus Pro right here, we have eight customizable buttons, so you can basically customize them to do whatever you want. They can be set to uh, do some shortcutting or to open some program, software, etc. There are a lot of applications for them. And the scroll wheel can be used again for several different things. You can go step backwards, you can change the brush size, you can rotate the canvas, etc. And uh, my preference is to use the scroll wheel just for brush size. So I'm always set, uh, I always have set uh, that wheel to change the brush size and I'm ready to go. About the shortcuts that I'm using on those eight buttons on the tablet, I'm only using two buttons. So I'm using the last one from the upper four buttons and the first one from, from the group of down four buttons. So the first uh, button is for me, it's for step backwards. So I can undo as many times as I want, as I have uh, set it in history and preferences. And the uh, second button is just for alt. So I can really easily, for example, when I'm in brush mode, I can really easily sample the color or when I'm using a stamp clone tool, I can uh, sample the parts that I want to clone, etc. Now I will show you some settings in Wacom Tablet Properties and Photoshop that I like to use. So here on the screen you can see this is the Wacom Tablet Properties dialog box and first thing that we will cover is a pen. Pen has a tip field so this basically uh, controls the pressure of your pen to get from zero to maximum amount of pressure. So if you put it to the soft and go to Photoshop. This is something that I don't like to use because now I cannot really easily control the brush size. As you can see, it's really, really hard. I'm not precise at all, but I will undo a few times, right? And if I go back to the properties, if I put it all the way to the maximum to firm, that means that you need to press a little bit more firmly to get from zero to maximum amount of pen pressure. So now you have really nice control over the brush size. But the problem here is that you need really hard to press on a tablet with a pen to get that 100% amount of uh, pen pressure. So my preference is to set it one point, one step above the middle. So this is how I like to set my tip field. So again, I can really easily control the brush size precisely and I don't need to press so hard to get to maximum pen pressure sensitivity. Okay, then we have a tip uh, double click distance. I'm leaving that in the middle and the tilt sensitivity is in normal. And then I have two buttons, two buttons on the brush that I can customize. So for Photoshop, the first one is for right click and the second one is for double click. So that's 
how I like to do it. Of course, you can change this to do a lot of other things. It's really customizable, so do however you feel it's best for you. Okay, then we have eraser. Eraser is this part here at the back of the brush. And uh, I basically don't use the eraser because it's, for me, it's much easier to press E on a keyboard to go to eraser mode and just brush it than to turn the brush completely opposite and then to erase. But the good thing with the eraser, if you want to do it, you can set to do some other things. You can open some applications, you can set some keyboard shortcuts, some clicks, etc. It doesn't need to be just eraser. Then we have a mapping. Mapping is another useful thing because you can map your work area to a certain portion of the screen or the whole screen. Or if you have a setup of two screens like I have, you can set a tablet to utilize both screens. But I just like to set it to my main monitor, to monitor one. And I like to use the full tablet area to uh, work on that full, uh, full portion of the tablet. So if you want, if you want to go to portion, then you can just change basically like you're changing the size of the tablet. So you're changing the portion of the area that you want to draw it and you can just maybe work in a smaller, smaller uh, size here and that's it. Right. And now let me show you in Photoshop if we press F5 and we are in a brush settings. So we are going to brush properties and here we have shape dynamics and like I like to control the size of the brush with that pen pressure. So you saw it before I can change the brush size, define the brush size by the pressure of my pen on the tablet. That's one thing that I like to use. Another thing is that I like to control the opacity of the brush with the pen pressure. So basically I'm controlling the amount of ink that I'm placing on my canvas. So it's, it's like this. I set opacity jitter to pen pressure and then I can just really easily control the amount of ink that I'm painting on the canvas and that's perfectly for me when I'm dodging and burning. I can really control the amount of ink. Maybe let's go to soft brush and the amount of ink somewhere I want maybe more ink or less ink. And this is really, really useful for dodging and burning. And in that way, you will be much faster and more productive than just to work with the mouse because with the mouse, you cannot control the pen pressure and you can be much more creative with the brush than with the mouse. You can create like better strokes, uh, really natural movements, etc. Right guys, now that you saw how I like to use my Wacom tablet and the settings that I'm using, let's start creating this photo manipulation. Okay, so this is the background that I will use for this photo manipulation. And this is a photo that I took several years ago when I was in Berlin doing a project for a client. So I will use this today. And my workflow basically always starts by finding a proper background first. And then I'm going to a studio to set up all my lights, to set up the camera, shooting the models. And when I'm finished with that, I transfer all my photos to a computer and then I try to find all my proper photos for the project. After I choose the proper photos from a bunch of photos that I took, first thing that I like to do is to extract the models out of the background. And this process is not so interesting for you to see it in real time, so that's why I'm fast forwarding it. So after I extract the models, I like to position it somewhere in the scene. And I think this is a good spot. So let me just check this, this guy here and this, this guy here can be right there. And now I need to play a little bit more with dodging and burning, adding some shadows to glue models uh, on the floor to merge them with this scene and layer color, color correct it. So let's do that. Let's first create a mask layer mask on myself here as you can see in Emania, this is me right create a layer mask and i just want to remove this part of the boots and this part of the knee here because i want to make impression that i'm standing on this uh, metal container or whatever it is so for that i will use a brush i will use a little bit harder brush and smaller like something like this and i need to use a black color so i'll click here press and hold shift 
and click somewhere here. So this is it, just to create a straight line. And the same with this. Click shift like this and that's it. Now it's much better. Now we have impression that I'm standing on that container. Of course, now we need to make some shadows here and that's really easy to do for this guy, for myself. And for this guy, it's a little bit more complicated, but you will see that really quickly. So I like to create a group for myself. Just uh, press here, or press Control, Command G, and I like to put myself in a group. I will call gr the group Nemanja, because I know that this is me, and I like to set a color for a group. So for myself, I will set an orange, because I have something orange, uh, yellowish, the, the raincoat here. So that will be like that. And for this guy, I will set a group, not orange, but I will set a blue, maybe. So let's... Let's take a blue. All right, this is good. So here I will press and hold Control or Command key to create a new layer, new empty layer, just below the current layer, and I will name this shadow. Okay, now let's move this a little bit here. Now I will put this in a multiple bending mode, use a brush and just select some dark color from the wall, something like this would be okay. And I will just for a start use a softer softer brush something like this and I can use 20% opacity like I don't want 100% opacity brush but now I want to set my brush to be controlled I can control the opacity with the pen pressure so for me this is really useful and practical and it will speed up my workflow a lot because I don't need to waste my time changing the opacity slider in Photoshop I can just control the opacity with the brush if I press softly on the tablet I will paint less amount of uh, ink on the photo. If I press firmly harder, then I will add more amount of the ink on the photo, more amount of the color, etc. So this is really, really nice when you have pen with a brush sensitivity. So let's do it. Let's paint some shadows here. So something, something like this here. Because the light is coming from this direction, the shadow will be on the wall and somewhere in front of myself. So I'll zoom it a little bit. This is cool. Somewhere here and here. And from my head, it will be somewhere here, like this. From the X. Okay, and of course here it will be darker and basically everything here will be darker, but this part will be more like this. And as you can see, now I will unzoom it a little bit and you will see before and after now it looks like I'm belonging to this scene much better than without the shadow. Now I'm basically glued to the scene. Right, so I don't want to, to draw too many details right now with the shadows. I can spend a lot more time tweaking this and uh, making the shadow even better. But for now, I will leave it like I will leave it like this. And I will make another shadow right here, just a little bit. I will create a new adjustment layer, a new empty layer, and I will choose this blue color, right? And I will just make a quick shadow from my head maybe just to add a little bit more details right here so this is it this is before this is after i will leave it like that just to have something like maybe maybe it will be even more in the front but with with a little bit of the arms but i will not do that this will sell the story the point here is that you don't need to be always 100 percent realistic you need to sell the story so that's mo most important all right now let's go for this guy for detective so I will collapse my group and I will rename this group to Kraka. Okay. And I will create a new empty layer. And uh, let me see if I name this shadow. I just like to name my layers. This is shadow from head. Okay. And I will now create this shadow layer and the same procedure. I will choose this color and I will put it in multiply bending mode and let me see this color is too bright so this one could be really nice maybe a little bit darker even somewhere here I'm holding alt or option key while 
Uh, I'm in a brush tool and with that I can sample the right color. So the point here guys is that I will I will just make, I will draw some shadows. So I need a little bit harder brush because that's a harsher light right here. As you can see this shadow is not so soft. Uh, if you're going more away from, from the light source the shadow will be a little bit softer but in this case not too much so we have one shadow that will will be somewhere here i'm just drawing now uh, to show you what i will make some shadow right here right then we will have another shadow somewhere from that light behind somewhere here just softer shadow something like this maybe maybe another shadow right here just to sell the story then this needs to be like that i don't want to waste your time now to watch me making those shadows uh, like like this, I will just fast forward all of that and we'll be back in a few seconds. Right guys, and that's it. As you can see right here, I have several different layers from the shadow. So this one is a contact shadow just below the, the shoes down there. Then we, I have this part that I needed to, to place it in a separate layer because I made this part of the shadow a little bit more blurry out of the focus then I have that part and I have these two shadows from both sides just to have it just for an impression maybe this is too much but I will leave it like this I'm okay with this this will sell the story so for this uh, photo this is okay so let's finish with the shadows right now right now what I like to do is to dodge and burn this to add a little bit more uh, lights on the models and maybe to add some shadows here and there so let's create new adjustment layer curves and I will clip to affect only the model and I will make it brighter this is for dodge right D for dodge and I will invert the mask by pressing Control command I so I will paint with the white here I will create another one for burn so I'll make everything darker like this and again I will invert it and name B for burn so this is my dodge and burn layers right for dodging and burning I like to use basically depends of the scene and uh, the amount of ink I want to use to dodge and burn but basically I want to use opacity set to 10 and to use the to control the opacity with the pen pressure so that's it and to put the hardness to zero now I will just make everything brighter his face a little bit brighter overall like this because now he is a little bit more in the shadow and let me see maybe just eyes just a little bit I will unzoom it let me see before and after so this is really nice maybe this part of the hand and the badge here so just a little bit I will see with the gun okay so this is a global dodging and burning I will not go into the details too much because uh, this photo will not be visible from like this kind of zoom it's more like this and I made this photo just for uh, Facebook or Instagram so social networks so I will not print it like in big details like this so that's something that you need to think about while you're retouching if you want later to print your photo on a big format then you need to invest a little bit more time tweaking those details because you will have the photo zoomed in later so it will be big but if you don't want to print it big if your photo is just for social networks then you don't need to waste your time tweaking uh, tweaking those small details all right so for now this is okay and let's see if i need to burn some parts maybe this parts of the gun just to make it a little bit darker just to bring back some details here and now i see that this gun because this gun is actually a lighter this is not a real gun it has really small hole here so i'll create a new empty layer and will name it gun hole right and i will use black brush and i will just paint a new hole right here so just a second something like just to make it wider right something like this have more impression like it's real gun all right so this is this is much better this is before and after so now it has a really nice hole for a bullet right let's go back to another model to myself again i will create curse adjustment layer for dodge and burn so this is for dodge this is for burn 
and I will name it D for dodge, B for burn, and invert both layers. And let's go here and play with this. So again, I need really soft brush, opacity maximum to 10%, and I will control the pen pressure from opacity zero to opacity 10% with the, the, the pen, of course, with the pressure. So let's make myself here a little bit brighter, but just this part, okay, not too bright. And just to see more details here, maybe even more here. And I want to make this X a little bit brighter, just a touch. Right, guys, now I will go here and dodge, actually burn some parts. So this parts, this part of the forehead, I like to make it darker, right? This part of the face too. And some parts that are in shadow, I like to make it even darker to add a little bit more contrast to it. So something like this. So let me see now quickly before and after. Yeah, before and after, as you can see, I painted basically a new light here to tweak it even more to match the scenes better. And Definitely, I will spend even more time tweaking those lights, dodging and burning a little bit more because uh, I like to spend uh, time for, for such uh, details here. But for the sake of this tutorial, I will leave it here just to tweak a little bit more. Actually, like this, a little bit more settings to make this part a little bit more brighter. And that's it. All right. so. Let me see, this is not bad. Overall, before and after and here, before and after, I like it. I will leave it like that. For now, this is really, really good. Now what I like to do, I like to put some hydrant here and the trash can and the dog. I made the hydrant and a trash can in a 3D software, Cinema 4D uh, to be uh, precise. So I will not go to process how I did it in a Cinema 4D because that's completely other type of tutorial. It's a 3D tutorial. This is a Photoshop tutorial. So I just made this to match the scenes, uh, to match the lights and to match the perspective for the scene. And I will just paste it in here. It's the same if I shot uh, that in a studio or some uh, if I found some uh, stock photos that I will later paste in the scene. Alright guys, I just pasted the hydrant trash can with the papers and the dog right here. So the hydrant and the trash can are basically renders. So I just render it and paste it here in Photoshop. But with the dog, it's a little bit different story. I will show you what I did right here. So this is a dog, just the dog that I extracted from one photo and put it right here. And then I just dodge it and burn it. I paint the light on the dog exactly the same that I paint the light on myself and on this detective guy. So. I don't want to waste your time doing that again, but that's completely the same procedure. And I just made the dog a little bit more bluish using color balance. So as you can see, I just push the mid-tones towards the cyan and towards the blues, and that's it. So because now the dog is a little bit more uh, warm and uh, orangey, and I don't like that. I like to be a little bit more cooler, like this scene. And I added some debris right here. As you can see, it's some debris on the floor like dog is uh, jumping from this uh, part of the ground and uh, debris are flying, etc. And I did that by using my debris brush. So if you're not familiar with that, how to make your debris brush, I have a full tutorial on that. You can find the link right here. So I will show you really quickly. I created a new layer. I will create somewhere above, somewhere here. Okay, and I go to brush and just use one of my debris brush that I created earlier and choose a color like this, for example, maybe even darker like this, and then just paint. As you can see, I just paint some debris and that's it. That's really simple and easy. So I just painted this and that's it. I don't want to add even more than I did. So let's name this debris and let me see before and after really, really nice. And one useful tip for you guys, if you're painting a debris in Photoshop, you can control debris size with uh, pen pressure. So I will show you that really quickly. So I will go press F5 on the keyboard to go to uh, brush properties. And this is my deb debris brush. And I can go to shape dynamics, size jitter and put it on a pen pressure. And now 
if I, let me zoom it a little bit, if I press really softly, I will have smaller debris, if I press hardly, harder, I will have bigger debris. So this is something that you need to consider if you want to create different kind of debris in Photoshop. This is really, really useful option and it will save a lot of time. Otherwise, you will need to go and change the brush size, for example, all the time, like make it smaller, bigger. Now it's really fast with the scroller on the tablet, but otherwise on a keyboard, you need to press several times to make like smaller, then bigger, then even bigger, etc. Right, guys, now let's clean up some layers here. Let's collapse the dog layer and let's select trash, dog and hydrant. And I want to set another color, maybe gray for this, all right? Just to change the color of those three elements that I, I pasted later here in the scene. Okay, now I'm basically done with all elements pasting and uh, dodging and burning, etc. Now I'll create a new global dodge and burn adjustment layer. So this is one for dodge. Right, and then I will make a copy, but just invert this, and this is for burn. And now I will just make final global dodging and burning with just a regular soft brush like this, and I will set the opacity to 10, brush to transfer, and to control opacity with the pen pressure. So I'll just make some brighter parts right here, okay, like this from the lights, and Right here, another brighter part, like this light is illuminating this guy right here. Okay, and maybe this wall a little bit brighter, etc. Now I'll go to burn and I will just add some kind of vignette right here. So, like this, to make this part a little bit darker. Maybe this and this a little bit darker now. This is too bright, so this would be cool. And maybe this part even darker. So I just want to set this burn layer into luminosity because I don't want to affect the color C. Now if I uh, set it in normal, the colors are more saturated, but because I messed with the colors too, if I set the luminosity, then I will just play with the luminosity values of the image. I will not mess the color. So this is how I like today. Right now, this is ready for some final color correction. Let's add a little bit more contrast with the curves, but I want to add contrast in the channels. So I want to add a little bit more contrast in the red, a little bit more in the green, as you can see right here, and in the blue, maybe to go something like this to open to add blues in shadows a little bit. So if I let me just see, this is too much. I just want to modify this a little bit. I want to add more greens in the shadows, just a little bit like this maybe like this, and I will lower the opacity of this overall. So something, this is too much, maybe around 34 or something. So before and after, yeah, just a small modification in color. So before and after, I don't know if you can see in your screens, but I can see small, small amount of uh, color shifting, and that's what I like. Now let's add some dust here. Let's create a new empty layer. Let's name it dust, right? And I will just use a white color with really soft brush like this and I will just paint like some haze, some smoke, some dust right here. Just a little bit, right? Like this dog is going crazy. This is, one, this is one way how you can do it. And another way, I will just make a copy of this layer. Another way is if you put the brush into the soul blending mode and put some smaller opacity values, as you can see, I have something like this, right? And then we can blur this. You will see the result really quickly filter blur gaussian blur and then we the blur we can control the shape of that mist etc but this is okay too so this is just with the brush this is with the blur similar so i will i will leave this with the blur thing so before and after this is really nice Right guys, I'm now finished with overall composition of this image and now I will play with the colors. So first I will merge everything together into one layer, then go into camera row, tweak some colors there, then 
I will use uh, Nikola Graphics Pro a lot. This is the plugin that I'm using a lot in my photo manipulations overall in my workflow. So let's do it. Right, let's press Shift Control Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac to merge everything into new layer. And now I will go to Filter and Camera Roll. And here in Camera Roll, I'll just tweak some colors first. Now everything is too saturated. I will desaturate everything a little bit like this and maybe go to yellows and just uh, a little bit of saturation in yellows and a little bit in orange. All right, just a touch and maybe add even more vignette here. Feather it just a little bit and sharpen it a little bit like this. And let me see, I can play with this, but this is it for now. I will press okay and this is it. So now I will go to filter and Nick Color FX Pro. Wait for a few moments for Photoshop to load this plugin and then we will change some settings there. Okay, first thing that I like to use in the Nikola Airfix Pro is Pro Contrast. And as you can see here, I have my favorites ones. There are a lot of other settings here, but basically those are my favorites that I'm using all the time. And uh, with the Pro Contrast, I just like to tweak this dynamic contrast. As you can see, dynamic contrast will preserve the details in shadows and highlights, and it will add overall contrast. So maybe this and a little bit of regular contrast and that's it. I'll press OK. And again, wait for a few moments for Photoshop to apply those settings. And that's it. Now when I'm done with uh, Pro Contrast, I will go and again apply filter Nick Color FX Pro. But this time I will use Detail Extractor. I will go right here, press on the Detail Extractor. As you can see, it has a lot more details in an image, something like HDR, but a little bit different. So this is before, this is after, this is too much. And I don't like to overdo image with this detail extractor filter, but I like to lower the details and to increase the contrast a little bit. And then I will press OK. And now I will add a black layer mask by holding Ultra Option key and click on the layer mask icon here. And I will paint those details just on some parts here of the image. So I will use a white brush, 100% opacity, but I will control the opacity with my uh, pen here. So I will just paint some details here on the ground, maybe right here. Something that I need to add a little bit details here and there. So let me see like this. And that's it, guys. So let me show you before and after. I don't know if you can see, but small uh, difference here on myself, on the detective guy here on the bricks. So this is basically the parts that I painted the detail in. Right guys, now I will play with the curse adjustment layer a little bit. I will change some colors using curse adjustment layer and then I will add the contrast a little bit and maybe brighten some parts even more. So let's do it. Let's create curse adjustment layer right here and I want to put it in a color because I want to affect only the colors, not the luminosity of an image. And now I'll go to red. And what I like to do, I like to lower the reds in highlights a little bit and bring up the reds in the shadows, something like like that. this. I don't want to touch mid-tones. Then the greens, I just don't want to touch mid-tones. Maybe, maybe to open some greens, to add greens in the highlights and add some greens in the shadows too. Something like this. I can always tweak this later if I'm not satisfied. And with the blues, let me see if I just remove some blues from the shadows, this is not bad. So let's go back to the reds, something like, like this. And this is before and after. Yes, I like my, uh, this tonality much better than this. So I remove that uh, purplish magenta tint from the shadows, as you can see, and I added overall a more warm tone to the image. Now I will go and create new curse adjustment layer, put it in luminosity, blending mode to affect only the luminosity, not the colors. And I will just add some contrast on the image a little bit more. So I will invert the mask and I will add some contrast just here around the edges, like here, here on the floor, maybe here. So I will fast forward this, guys. 
Right, and that's it. So let me show you, this is before and this is after. Before and after, as you can see with this, I just add a little bit more contrast here and there. And uh, now I will add another curves adjustment layer in normal blending mode and just open some parts. I just want to open a little bit more the face of this guy right here, this part. This is too much, so maybe just a little bit right here. Let me see. Just to make them a little bit more stand out. So this is before and after, yeah, just a little bit. All right. Right guys, and we are almost done. With the color correction part, I really love to play with the colors and to tweak that until I'm really satisfied with overall look. So now I will still tweak this a little bit here and there. I will go and merge again everything together, go in the camera row, tweak a little bit there and a little bit more in the Nikol FX Pro and I will finish this image. So let's do that. Let's merge everything together with Shift Control Alt E or Shift Command Option E on a Mac and then let's go to filter and camera row. And here in a camera row, I like to play with some things. For example, I like to add vignetting a little bit, to feather that like this, then to sharpen the image just a little bit more like this and go to split toning. I like to add some warmth in the shadows. So I will go somewhere here and maybe around 50 or 60, something like this. I don't want to add too much because it's not, uh, really interesting for my taste, but just a little bit and a little bit of the greenish into highlights. So again, not too much, but just, just a touch. So let me see before and after already big difference and maybe to add a little bit more contrast and to add a little bit more black. So let's go back to split toning. Let me see something like this. I will press okay. And this is something that we got after the camera filter. So this was before and this was after. Right now I will go to uh, Nick Analog FX Pro and tweak some things there. So I will go to filter, Nick Collection, Analog FX Pro 2 and I will choose an effect right here. I will make everything a little bit bigger and as you can see here you have a lot of different effects that you can apply to your image and of course you can tweak the current effect to suit your your image better and uh, I will choose something. You have different uh, cameras, different settings here. So you have ca classic camera, you, ca you have vintage camera, for example, if you want something more vintage. And let me see, maybe this is not bad, but here you will see, I don't like the frame. I can, I can choose frames off. Maybe I don't like this uh, bokeh effect. Uh, I can play with some other settings here and there, etc. But Maybe, let me see, film type is not bad. I can lower the strength and uh, maybe this. And in basic correction, I don't like so much detail extraction. So maybe something like this. Let me see how this will impact the image. Let's press OK. Not bad, not bad at all. So this is before, this is after. I will leave it like this. And now let's tweak it a little bit more. Right guys, this is going in a direction that I really like, but I want to tweak this a little bit more and I will fast forward this because I don't want to waste your time too much. So I will go again to Analog FX Pro and try another effect on the top of this. Maybe uh, add some masking, maybe desaturate this because now it's too saturated and uh, I will try a few things here and there and then I will come back with the final version. Alright guys, and this is it. This is my final version, I hope so. I will not tweak it uh, more than this and I will just show you really quickly what I did before that. So. I just add one more layer of this smoke, of this fog, because I liked it. And then I add a little bit more dodge and burn, as you can see before and after some global dodge and burn, right? And a little bit color change with uh, curves. This here, as you can see, just a little bit. And then I added the mouse. I added the mouse here just as a detail. I really love it, like mouse is closing his eyes. He don't want to see what will happen if this guy will hit the detective or not, of course. This is the layer of the mouse and the shadow. And that's that's it. And after a little bit more of a camera roll, this is 
our final, final version, final image for today. Really guys, and that's it for this episode. I really hope that you like it and that you learn something new here. This is how I usually do all my work for clients. I'm always shooting the background first, then I'm going to studio, shoot the models or other objects there. And sometimes like I did here, I create some things in a 3D that I cannot shoot or I cannot find in real life really easily. And then I combine everything in Photoshop. And when you shoot your models in the studio and other objects, when you have proper lights and proper position of the camera, it's really easy to set everything in the background to place it in the right space, etc. And then what I spend the most time is color grading as you saw right here. And I always use my Wacom tablet for retouching because it's much faster and more intuitive to work with a pen and a tablet than to work with the mouse. And I cannot even do some things with the mouse. For example, I cannot control a pen pressure and that is something that is really important to me. And if you are a little bit more serious about Photoshop, then start using a tablet. If you're asking me for a recommendation, which tablet should you use? I will always say go with the Wacom because that's my favorite brand. I'm using them for more than 11 years now and you will definitely not go wrong with that brand. So that's it for today, guys. If you have any questions regarding to this episode, please ask me down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer them. Have fun experiment and see you in my next one episode.